Okay, uh, good afternoon everybody. I'm Vasiliki Andraki and I'm on my first year of the PhD and I'm going to present the potential of multidimensional visualization stratigraphic analysis. Uh, the present case study is about the lacustrine settlement of La Draga in Bagnoles. It's at the northeastern part of the Iberian Peninsula and uh, it's near Barcelona, Spain. The total extension um, of the uh, Neolithic occupation settlement was calculated at 10,000 uh, 10, square meters, uh, 1,500 of which are currently underwater. The excavated sectors are sector C, the one underwater currently, sector A, excavated uh, within the years, um, one in dry conditions actually merged, and sector B, consisted by sector B and sector D as a whole, uh, into the water table as well. So here are the different techniques of excavation, the underwater, the one in, sec in sector B and sector A in dry conditions. Uh, here we can see uh, those, uh, the three sectors uh, represent distinct sedimentary environments with a subsequent characteristic inclination uh, of, the depositional, um, of the depositional units when near, nearer to the lake. Here is sector C, sector B, sector A. Please note the compaction of the archaeological layers. Here we have the different conservation conditions in every sector as well. Uh, so the objectives of this research are first to decipher the taphonomic history of the lacustrine settlement of La Draga, and secondly, uh, understand the role and teacher play of both natural and anthropic processes affecting the location of the social action and um, the special distribution of its material consequences. Um, these are some of the formation processes actually uh, present in uh, wetlands uh, of geogenic nature. Uh, the majority of those are usually um, summarized under erosional transport and depositional processes, which could also include accumulation, inundation events, water fluctuations, trampling, fire events, and so on. But apart Apart from the geogenic and unintentional activities that leave marks on the stratigraphy, there are also the intentional anthropogenic formation processes, which in the case of La Draga include the preparation of elevated uh, surfaces, the so-called pile dwelling structures made out of timber logs. This is the oldest archaeological layer found, dated at 5,300 to, uh, to 4,900. Um, at sector B, the one under the water table, is found at the elevation of uh, 171.8 meters, and the wooden timber logs were perfectly preserved due to the anaerobic conditions. Uh, we should bear in mind the elevation of the superficial layers uh, throughout the whole excavated area, that's about uh, 174 meters above the sea level, in order to understand the strong compaction of the layers above the natural marshes. On the other hand, this first archaeological layer is not pre preserved at sector A, the one in dry conditions, but instead the evidence of its existence is manifested uh, by the layer of post holes found on the surface um, of the natural marshes, here indicated with these red lines. And underneath of those, uh, th those were excavated uh, individually and uh, the post holes were uh, found in different elevations. Um, the more recent uh, layer was dated at 5,200 to 4,800 years and was preserved at all sectors. Um, so we can say that there was no chronological interruption between the two, uh, the two occupation uh, layers. This second layer consisted of traversing paths and uh, associated structures. 
and associated, uh, yeah, and the these are the structures. Um, this was encountered at 172.05 meters, while at sector A at 172.3 meters. Here you can note the different structures uh, marked. Um, at sector C, uh, the underwater run, both archaeological layers are found as well under perfect preservation conditions, although at a greater depth. Uh, this way, the oldest one is found at 171.62 uh, meters and the more recent one, 171.32. So, uh, what's our problem in La Draga, actually? Our problem is that uh, what one process forms, another process deforms. We have excavated sectors with different uh, sedimentary environments and we have surfaces as a result of the different formation processes which we have to distinguish be, uh, depending on their nature. Uh, so how can we solve this problem? Uh, we propose the construction of a three-dimensional uh, sequence of surfaces where surfaces are not just features of contact but are considered as uh, distinct events in time. Um, so uh, that and uh, in addition a 4D volumetric sequence um, of surfaces um, is constructed where the volume filling, the gap between the two surfaces of contact represents the record of formation process through time. As a result, we can achieve a dynamic spatiotemporal uh, reconstruction of the formation processes. So the methods applied here include uh, firstly the construction of 3D uh, boreholes where each borehole is considered as a stratigraphic columns with specified x, y, and z coordinates. Secondly, the elaboration of this information and its introduction into the software. Next, the connection of boreholes through surface correlation in space. Uh, the analysis uh, of the depositional history of the stratigraphic units through microstratigraphic analysis, which is also in process but is not going to be presented here. And as a result, uh, the interpolation of surfaces and volumes for the construction of a volumetric uh, model. So here we have the boreholes that are constructed both of independent cores made uh, throughout the excavated sectors and um, from uh, the stratigraphic sections uh, artificially designed, artificially taken. Um, Okay, so uh, all these boreholes were lately, were later um, introduced in Excel data sheets uh, with sector section, location and stratigraphy information included. This is a map of La Draga with some selected boreholes for this presentation. Not the totality of those were selected in order to reduce the density. Uh, on the right map um, of the site, the blue dots are the blue dots are the independent drillings. This course uh, we have selected in the middle of the uh, various sectors in order to <coughs> implement the uh, stratigraphic information. Um, so once we have constructed the points, uh, the next thing to do is proceed to the stratigraphic relation based on the common surfaces. So the top surface and the bottom surface information for each layer is provided from, their, from the Excel data sheet. So we have the top surface, the bottom surface. The top surface of each unit is directly the bottom surface of the, of the units right above it. Um, uh, the stratigraphic correlation is produced and here we see uh, the uh, bottom unit, the bottom surface and the top surface of the same depositional unit. In order to illustrate this better, here we have the stratigraphic correlation of the bottom surface of this unit. Um, and here we have a second surface from another unit above the first one. Uh, the next step is the stratigraphic correlation of three-dimensional surfaces, which means the bottom surface 
the top surface and the volume filling the gap between them. I don't know if you can see the three-dimensional body, but that's different from the previous one. Um, we have the second one, as before, as well three-dimensional, and then a sequence of both of them. Um, through the greeting uh, of these surfaces, we can all the stratigraphic contacts between them and how their accumulation produces uh, the ground subsidence uh, shown in this, uh, in this place. This is a part of the B sector, the one under the water table, and here we can see this ground subsidence. Uh, so, during the process of reconstructing occupation layers, the interpolation of contemporaneous stratigraphic contacts is necessary. The interpolation method uh, preferred here is Krigging, and that's why it can measure distances between all possible pairs of sample points, and uses this information uh, to model the spatial autocorrelation for the particular surface we, we need to interpolate. So what we have is present things that are closer, more alike than things that are further apart. It also offers a lot of variogram options from which we can choose the ones that adapt our necessities. And once we create our two-dimensional location map of the boreholes and we draw our correlation lines that interest us, then we can proceed to the construction of, this, of the sequence of surfaces. Um, here, this is based on the result of the interpolation explained above. Moving from the bottom up, we see one layer after another, beginning with the natural bedrock of carbonated marshes that is sown throughout the whole excavated uh, settlement. Um, here we have the oldest archaeological timber logs uh, layer and the second one also present throughout all excavated sectors. The one named archaeological layer was found at the independent course. Um, I showed you earlier these blue dots and uh, these we couldn't define either it, it pertained to one or another archaeological layer but we certainly could define it was an archaeological one. So we'll, we let it run and we see that it's uh, automatically uh, correlated with the, with the previous archaeological uh, layers here. Then we have um, the turba layer, which is a brown, it has a brownish to darkish color layer. It's rich in organic material and it usually taps the uh, archaeological layers. Above it, a layer of carbonated sands, same in nature as the natural bedrock, restricted to the lakeshore zone, indicating the water presence at a specific time, affecting the layers underneath it. Here is sector C, as you can see. Th this would be the sector C. Here is the lakeshore margin. Here would be sector A, and here sector B. Uh, above that, a layer of fossil beach indicating the water presence at various parts of the settlement may be indicating the older lake limits and flooding <coughs> events associated with the ground subsidence observed in sector B. Uh, next up, coming another layer of carbonated sands uh, filling the inundated parts at sector B. And at last, the superficial layer. Continuing with the volumetric interpolation, another time Krigging was used um, thanks to its capacity of capturing directional trends and the fact that distances between point pairs are based on the three-dimensional di coordinates of the control points, which in this case are the, are the uh, settlement limits. Here we have a map of the 3D <coughs> borehouse from sectors A and B. Uh, you remember A, the one in dry conditions, and B, the one under uh, the water table. Um, here we have a fence diagram actually connecting uh, with cross sections the, uh, the two uh, different parts of boreholes. A layer greeting of sector B alone and the 3D volumetric uh, models produced with the expansion of each layer first of uh, sector B alone, here noting the depression. I'm sorry for the, for the image, but I couldn't 
um, it's, it's not really detailed, but here we can see the, the depression noted area on the surface. And here we have a 3D model of sectors A and uh, B together. Um, at this point, I should note that thin sections for micro micromorphological study have been already realized on both sectors and are currently under study, but are going to be presented uh, at another conference uh, in June. Um, finally, that is the solid model of selected points throughout all excavated sectors and drillings. Better quality graphics and their representations are, um, are expected to be, to be present at the, at the paper presentation of this, uh, at, the, at the paper version. Uh, so the results. The results uh, confirm the stratigraphic continuity throughout all excavated sectors, the natural inclination of the stratigraphic formations at a greater depth when closer to the lake shore, the ground subsidence and the creation of a doline at sector B, um, giving rise to subsequent formation process as it's infilling with water and carbonated sands at the same time of the rise of the lake's water table, and to conclude, uh, we intended to go further beyond the representation of stratigraphy as a, a two-dimensional Harris matrix uh, with its restrictions, while the actual nature of the stratigraphic record is three-dimensional. That we hope to achieve with the integration of geological information of the archaeological sediments and soils with the aid of micromorphology. This way, reconstructing the origins uh, of the volume between surfaces of contact and continuing further to its correlations in space and time, uh, we take into account uh, the surfaces as distinct events in time. Of course, this research is not over and much more has to be done in order to have a coherent result. Uh, the introduction of calibrated dates um, corresponding to the stratigraphic formations is necessary in order to insert the time dimension into the model. And on the other hand, further study uh, of the formation process will add valuable <coughs> geological uh, information, while the integration at a unique metric uh, model, including the bodymetric information which we have from the lake as well, um, will help deciphering the dynamics of La Draga and reconstructing its basin during the Neolithic occupation. Uh, well, thank you very much for your attention.